The Diels-Alder reaction involves the combination of a 4-atom pi system containing 4 pi electrons with a 2-atom pi system containing 2 pi electrons. In the product, two new bonds have formed between the ends of the pi systems. And this is a concerted reaction that occurs in a single elementary step. It's what we call a pericyclic reaction. In this series of videos, we're going to explore the Diels-Alder reaction in detail. It has very high synthetic utility because it builds up a complex molecular framework, a six-membered ring containing a double bond, from simpler separated starting materials. And there are some interesting issues with this reaction associated with the connectivity of the product that forms. What's the regioselectivity of the reaction, in other words? What connects to what, and how does that lead to a particular isomer of the product? And some interesting stereochemical issues as well, since the reaction can form or establish as many as four stereocenters at once. And so we want to be able to predict, for example, the configuration of the product given the cis-trans configurations in the starting materials. By the end of this video series, you'll be able to do this with ease by understanding some of the mechanistic details and subtleties of the Diels-Alder reaction. And it's one of the most useful reactions in all of organic chemistry. It's been applied countless times in synthesis. And so I hope to convey a little bit of the beauty of this reaction in this series of videos as well. We generally think about polar organic reactions involving pairs of electrons moving around as proceeding through the combination of a nucleophile and electrophile through, generally speaking, electron flow like this, where the nucleophile donates a pair of electrons to the electrophile, forming the products or an intermediate that may then go on through further steps to form the products. But there are certain reactions in organic chemistry where this isn't exactly the whole story. There are reactions in which the nucleophile and electrophile, for example, may both contain a reactive electron pair, and the electrons actually flow in a cyclic manner, forming and potentially breaking multiple bonds at once. And electrons in which this cyclic electron flow happens in a single elementary step are known as pericyclic reactions, since electrons are flowing in a cyclic manner. The Diels-Alder reaction is an important example of a pericyclic reaction, and so we're going to introduce them in this video. One of the most important things to understand about pericyclic reactions from the outset is that they are concerted. They occur in a single elementary step. This means that pericyclic reactions involve a single orbital interaction as well, and because no intermediates are formed, there's essentially no time for bond rotations and things like this. So we'll see, for example, the configurations of starting materials often preserved in the products because of the concerted nature of these reactions. And electron flow is cyclic, and we'll see that in the examples that we look at on this slide. There are three general classes of pericyclic reactions. The first are what are called sigmatropic rearrangements. And in this class of reactions, a sigma bond migrates across a pi system. The hydrogen and its pair of electrons migrates across the pi system, like so, and the double bonds shift to accommodate movement of the CH bond. And so electron flow is cyclic. Electrons find their way back to carbon-1 from carbon-5 through electron flow through the pi system. The key to a sigmatropic rearrangement is that a bond, a sigma bond, for example the CH bond that I'm highlighting here, is migrating across a pi system as I'm highlighting here in blue. In electrocyclic ring opening or ring closing, a pi bond is converted into a sigma bond through cyclic electron flow. Cyclic molecules with this pattern of a pi system linking two sp3 hybridized carbons engaged in a sigma bond with each other can actually open using reverse cyclic electron flow like this, and this is what we call electrocyclic ring opening. And so from right to left, we have electrocyclic ring opening. And from left to right, we have electrocyclic ring closing. And these are exact microscopic reverses of one another. Where we're going to focus our attention in this series of videos is on cycloadditions. Cycloadditions are similar to electrocyclic ring closing reactions, except now two distinct pi systems are coming together through cyclic electron flow that forms two bonds at once. We can classify different types of cycloaddition reactions based on the number of atoms involved in each of the pi systems. So for example, here we see that a butadiene containing a four atom pi system, four carbons there, combines with an ethylene or an ethene containing two carbons. And so we refer to this as a four plus two 
cycloaddition based on the size of these pi systems. This reaction forms two new sigma bonds here and here, and the double bonds shift. Notice that two of the pi bonds now have been converted into these two new sigma bonds, while one of them has gone into this new pi bond in the product. And just to jog your memory here, this particular 4 plus 2 cycloaddition is the Diels-Alder reaction, and it's certainly the most important cycloaddition reaction and one of the most important reactions in all of organic chemistry, in fact. Here's a slightly more complex example of the Diels-Alder reaction, and let's take a moment to draw the curved arrows for this process. One point I'll make here is that because the electron flow is cyclic, we can draw the curved arrows in one of two directions. So here's one way of drawing the curved arrows that shows counterclockwise electron flow. It's actually slightly better than the opposite direction, although both are equally correct from an arrow pushing perspective. We can also draw this mechanism by flowing electrons in the opposite direction. Now from the two atom pi system on the bottom like this, and now notice we're moving electrons in a clockwise direction. Actually both sets of curved arrows lead to the same product. The reason why I actually prefer the first set of curved arrows is because these emphasize that this carbon in the two atom pi system is electrophilic. And if you think about the nature of the cyano group, you'll understand why this carbon is in fact electrophilic. This gives us insight and will give us insight in the future when we look at more complicated examples into why the product has the structure it does and how electrons are really moving on a more subtle level during this process. And so I would argue here that the counterclockwise direction of electron flow landing on that bottom carbon of this cyanoalkene is the better way to draw these curved arrows. In a bookkeeping sense, however, both are equally correct. What makes the Diels-Alder reaction so great? Well, first of all, we get complex molecule synthesis from this reaction. We're bringing two substrates together to form one substrate and forming two sigma bonds at the same time. And I've talked a lot about how that's a great synthetic advantage. The reaction is also perfect in terms of what it's called its atom economy. The reaction has no byproducts since all of the atoms of the substrates are incorporated into the product. That can make purification relatively straightforward since we don't need to separate anything out except unreacted substrate. Let's talk about some important terminology in this reaction. The four atom component, the substrate containing the four atom pi system is known as the diene, hopefully for fairly obvious reasons. It's got two double bonds in conjugation with each other, di for two, ene for double bonds. The substrate that reacts with the diene is known as the dienophile, and this is always the 2 atom or 2 pi component, and it's called a dienophile because it loves, quote unquote, it reacts with the diene. The product that forms in a Diels-Alder reaction of all carbon pi systems is always a cyclohexene, a six-membered ring containing a single double bond. And when you're thinking about applying the Diels-Alder reaction synthetically, you should look for this specific structure within the target. Wherever you see a six-membered ring within a target, the Diels-Alder reaction is a good candidate reaction to use, but you want to be careful to identify a cyclohexene like this specifically. For example, in the substrate that we see down here, there are two six-membered rings, but only one of them can be made using a Diels-Alder reaction. The one that can be made using a Diels-Alder reaction is the ring on the left, because this is a cyclohexene. The ring on the right is not, strictly speaking, a cyclohexene, since these carbons involved in the CO double bonds are sp2 hybridized. We need sp3 hybridization at these carbons in the middle of the ring here in order to use the Diels-Alder reaction to construct that ring. And so to deepen our understanding of this reaction, let's just take a minute and work backwards from this product or target to the substrates that could have been combined to form it. In other words, what diene and dienophile can this be made from? Well, if we look at the example above, we see that the reaction establishes two new sigma bonds that are two bonds away from the double bond within the cyclohexene. And those bonds within this target at the bottom are here and here. One of the nice things about pericyclic reactions, and a theme you'll notice as we study the Diels-Alder reaction in more detail, is that to work backwards, you need only flow electrons in the opposite direction. 
So we can use cyclic electron flow in a retrosynthetic or backwards sense to generate the diene and dienophile that can be used to construct this cyclohexene using a Diels-Alder reaction. And so I can just follow my cyclic electron flow, follow the arrows backwards to generate the diene and dienophile here. So here's the diene, and notice that I've got two new double bonds, one from cleavage, quote unquote, in the reverse direction of this sigma bond, and the other one from a shift of the double bond in the cyclohexene, down like so. And I've got the dienophile, and here the dienophile contains other double bonds that are not directly involved in the reaction. The only atoms actually involved in the 4 plus 2 process in the forward direction are these guys here. These correspond to these atoms in the target. So hopefully this example gives you a sense of how you can apply the Diels-Alder reaction in a retrosynthetic sense to see how a six-membered cyclohexene ring can be prepared from a diene and dienophile. There are other cycloaddition reactions than 4 plus 2 that involve pi systems of various sizes, and I just want to show a few of these examples on this slide of these reactions. So here's one that involves the combination of a 3-atom pi system with a 2-atom pi system, or a 3 plus 2 nitrone alkene cycloaddition. Here's one involving two 2-atom two pi systems coming together, a 2 plus 2, initiated by light. And this is called a photochemical 2 plus 2, since light has to be involved. And finally here, we have a 6 plus 4 cycloaddition, where a 4-atom pi system combines with a 6-atom pi system to generate a product with a lot of structural complexity.